Hey guys, this is Nick from Beer and Bat Rips. And today I'm going to show you how I do my Nurgle paint scheme. So you can see I've done the Glotkin, the Forge World Great Unclean one, Nurglings, Mortarion, Mind the square bases, of course. And I'm going to show you on Rodigus. Just picked him up. Very excited. So as you can see, I start with the black. I actually spray black with these guys. A lot of my armies, I start with a white undercoat, but I spray Chaos Black for these guys. I don't want the green to get too bright. And we'll be right back with the first step. Okay, so after you've got all your paints ready, I start with Death World Forest. Give it a good shake, like always. And this is my base for basically all my bigger Nurgle models. And basically, I'll get a bigger brush in a second, but I'm going to go around all the all of his skin is going to start with a layer of Death World Forest. I'm going to go around the more, obviously I've wet my brush first, but I'm going to go around all the detailed areas so that I can hit the bigger folds of his skin with a bigger brush to kind of speed the process up. But I'm going to do it around his mouth and his face with that Death World Forest. And when I come back, he'll be covered in it. Thank you. All right. So now that he's covered in a few layers of thin coats of Death World Forest, making sure to not cover any of the huge wounds he has or any fine detail that we're going to do different colors with. The next step is you get Bale Tan Green. Shake it up real good, and we're going to apply this over the entire model. Obviously, you're going to eventually want a bigger brush than this. I'm just going to show you a few, and it's it's going to seem pretty thick, but we are going to dry brush after this and highlight and really make it all pop. So this is really just going to sit down into the recesses. You want to make sure it doesn't pool too much. And just keep it moving. Especially when you start with a lot on your brush like I did. You don't always need to start with that much, but... And you just take your time. The brush you trust. <laughs> Nice steady hand, and you're going to want to cover the whole, all the Death World Forest with that nice ink wash. It's going to end up sitting in the recesses and make all those details pop, and we'll be back when he's totally covered and dried. So, now that we have him completely covered with his ink wash, the next step is to do all the fine detail little scales and bumps and nurgle nurgly things just like his back so how we're going to get it to look like that is we're first going to dry brush with moot green so you're going to want to take a good dry one of your best dry brush ones and you want to make sure that we're leaving some areas nice and dark just like on this one so we're going to try to get all the raised areas done around the wounds anywhere we see nasty little areas like his feet stuff like that his face so I'm going to first start, I'm going to dry brush down and around this wound, 
slash mouth. <laughs> and that's going to really brighten up that area and highlight it. So if you've never dry brushed before, you get a little bit on there. You take a napkin or paper towel and you basically keep wiping it on the napkin until it's almost gone, until it almost doesn't show up. And then you just pretty much just highlighting, just brightening up the area so that those details stand out a little bit. So I'm going a little a little heavy with the dry brush. That's the way I do my my uh, Nurgle army and Nurgle paint scheme. That's one of the best things about Nurgle is that you can really kind of just go nuts. You don't have to be super precise or clean with it. You can just kind of start brightening it up. Before you know it, as you jump from spot to spot, brightening up these folds, you can kind of stop for a second and just kind of look at it and you realize how much it's really brightening up. So basically, that'll really brighten up all the detailed areas while keeping the recessed areas with the ink in it. And we'll go ahead and knock out that whole model. So, as you can see, the highlights really, they just look so good on the Nurgle models because of all the folds, nasty little wrinkles everywhere. But if you look, you can see especially on like the knees and the toes you can see where that bright green really makes it pop almost like radioactive slime from the Simpsons or something <laughs> and you can't help but just smile while you're painting it it's such a joy to paint and it's so simple it's just so easy and satisfying just going back and forth across the model just highlighting all these edges. Very, very simple. The next very important step, and one thing that kind of separates my Nurgle from a lot of other people's that I've seen, is I crank it to 11 in certain areas. I go to Flash Gets Yellow, which is just about one of the brightest yellows we can get. And if you look at one of my done ones, you can see where I want that green to really, really pop and draw your attention. I hit it with the yellow. And it's just something that I've done with all my Nurgle big models. It's kind of one thing I love to do. But I'm going to try like this one and restrain myself and just hit certain areas and not just coat the whole model. So if you look at Rodigus, I'm going to do around the wounds. You just want to be real careful. On the feet, I like to go across the feet right there with the yellow. These knees are going to be really tempting, but for now I'm just going to go around the wounds He's got this real creepy face coming out of his arm. I'm going to hit around that. His face, I'm going to get a little yellow. That big wound. On his back, he's got this spot on his foot that I'm just, I'm ready to hit that with yellow. That's going to look really good. He's got some scales around all the wounds. So all those areas are going to really pop and look real good. So that's the next step. So as you can see, I've done my yellow edge highlighting on all the scales, 
the feet, around all the wounds, where these tentacles are bursting out, along the feet, the hands, his face. Just a real nice, gross Nurgle skin. So the next step is we're going to hit all these tentacles bursting through here. It goes through his skin and bursts out right there. There's more tentacles. Tongue. Uh, some tentacles here. They're just all over the place, really. All over the model. We're going to do all those with Gene Sealer Purple. I'll just show, go ahead and show you the next couple steps. We're going to do Gene Sealer Purple, and then when that's dry, we're going to do True Tree Violet. And then when that's dry, you go right to Lucius Lilac. And I'll be right back to show you how that looks. So now that we've done the Mephiston Red on all the wounds, all the big open areas, and then went back over it with Reclam Flesh Shade. See this little face. The next thing we're gonna do is move on to the teeth. So anywhere there's teeth or horns, and t teeth, horns, toenails. I think that's it. Is teeth, horns, and toenails. Um, the way we're going to do that is one of my favorite paints, Ushab T Bone. And there's a million ways to do bone. You can ask any Nagash player, they'll have their own way to do it. The way I do it is I go Ushabdi Bone, then Reckland Flesh Shade, and then the last big thing, once that's all dry, for the tips of the horns, as you can see on my Glocken model, I start at the top and I come down, you know, just a little bit of the horn with Rhinox Hide. And I do that on all of it. Teeth. All the different horns. So if you look at my Mortarion, even his little horns, I've done it the same way. So that's Ushab T Bone, Reckland Flesh Shade, and then Rhinox Hide just on the tip. Alright. Okay. So we took all the teeth. We hit him with Ushabti Bone, toenails. And then after Ushabti Bone, we do Reckland Flesh Shade to give him kind of that reddish tint that I like on my models on their nails and horns. There's also fingernails that I forgot to mention in the last one. So, got fingernails all done. Here's the actual horns. You can see where. The ink is sat in the recesses, and then you do those tips with the Rhinox Hide. And while I had the Ushabdi Bone out, I went ahead and hit all the maggots. So there's one in his eye, one in those gums, obviously spilling out of his mouth. There's some in these wounds right here on his neck. In that wound, there's a couple maggots, and in the wound on his hand, it's infested. And what we do with those is we hit him with the Ushab T Bone again, but instead of Reckland Flesh Shade for the maggots, I used Seraphim Cephia ink, and it gives them kind of a yellowish. You can see they're kind of yellow instead of red. It's pretty disgusting, but you know we're painting Nurgle, so that's that's part of it. And then the last thing I did with the Ushab T Bone is just a single dot on his eyes for just a real creepy zombie like dead eye look no pupils no ink wash just a black around it and a single dot 
of the Ushabti bone for that really creepy, almost undead zombie look. All right, so as you can see, we're at a pretty good spot right now. He's coming along real well. Next, I'm going to do the chainmail back here. And what you want to get for the chainmail is Necron Compound. It's a dry type paint. And all you do is you just dry brush it right onto the black. You can go kind of sloppy with it. It ends up looking great. And then after that, when that's dry, you go over it again with Agrax Earthshade. And that gives it a real dirty, old, dirty metal look to it. Um, that's the way I do mine. There's lots of different ways people do metal. Some people just go straight lead belcher and then the Agrax Earthshade. But I like the almost black metal look. And then we're going to go ahead and do the cloth and his hood. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to clean this all up with Abaddon Black. Get it nice and black all the spots where I've clearly gone over it with my dry brush. Same with back here. And then we're going to just hit, highlight these edges, all these edges on his hood with a dry called Graybeard Gray, or Longbeard Gray. And I will show you those right afterwards and how it looks. Okay, so just to show you real quick, what it was that I did, I took for these chains, for the chain mail, Necron Compound Dry Brush. And I just dry brushed the chains real quick, real easy. And then I go over the top of that, Agridux Earthshade. Quickest thing on the whole model. It was done in like two minutes. Then, we do one of my favorite transformations. We take the black cloth and we dry brush long beard, dry, long beard gray. And you just watch this like amazing transformation happen where his cloak suddenly goes from black to this like amazing detailed gray. And you really start seeing the model coming together with the beady eyes and the maggots and the gray hood he's getting close so the next step his staff what we're going to do is we're going to take Mornfang Brown we're going to coat the whole staff with it okay then we're going to do as I'm sure you can guess Agrax Earthshade over that then, to get this nice, withered, ancient staff look, when that's dry, we finish it with the Longbeard Gray. And it's going to end up being a nice, old, withered staff. Alright, let's get to it. So, you can see here, we took that Longbeard Gray, and we dry brushed it all over the staff to get that nice withered highlighted staff look and you can really see the models really coming together now so we're almost done actually so last few things these little dangling things all over the model little bells little Nurgle symbols in his hood if you look real close he has these little skulls that hold the hood to his body. And then if you turn him, he has a little dangly bell right here. And he has two more skulls holding this. So for all of those, all the skulls and all the little dangly items, we're going to use Hashut Copper. And you really got to shake this up because it really settles. All right. So we get the copper down. And then when that's down, you go from that to Reclam Flesh Shade. 
and that makes it like a real red brass color. Um, so yeah, we'll get that on the model, see how it looks. So, here are the items hanging off his staff. I actually did Rhinox hide on all the straps. Sorry, I'm trying to get to focus. There we go. All these little straps holding the items on. Um, and then we did the Ricklin flush shade to make them kind of coppery. You can see this little bell hanging off that tentacle. Real little. And here's what I was talking about with the skulls. Brass skulls kind of holding his long cloth on. And then the little brass skulls holding his cloak on. Alright, so. Get out of here so the camera stops trying to focus on him. Okay, so. The last step, and it's a very important step, Nurgle's Rot Technical Paint. If you've ever used this stuff, it's very thick, it goes on thick, and it's permanent. So here's where you have to make a big decision. Do you want to keep the bright red wounds and just keep him extra colorful? Or do you want to use the Nurgle's Rot to make the wounds seeping green and pus filled. I personally like it because it dulls the red a little bit. It makes it not as bright. I do think this will still end up being brighter because the wounds are just a lot bigger. Um, I'll probably put a little bit of it on the maggots. Not too much though. I don't want to take away the yellow look on there. Um, but yeah. This is the last step. The thing about this is you can't really paint over it. So it's very important that it's the very last step. So I'm going to apply a happy, <laughs> healthy amount of Nurgle's Rot technical paint to these wounds. And we'll see how it turns out. Alright, here we have it. You can really see where the special effect Nurgle's Rot technical paint sits on all of it and really collects in a very disgusting way. Just covered in ooze. Oh, that one's gross. His wounds are just covered and filled with this pus. Really adds a really gross finish to the model. They're all covered. Here he is. Rodigus. I gotta tell you, this may have been one of the most satisfying models I've ever painted. I really didn't think anything would be better than the Glotkin in terms of Nurgle, but... Rodigus is now the new king. This model was so satisfying to paint. So many little hidden things that were fun. Really pops on the table. The tentacles really stand out well. The staff is awesome. His face is just so creepy and gross. In terms of the base, you have several options. You could go for this sort of tundra style base with the tufts. And if you were to do that, that's just, you know, one of the normal, I think it's Imperial Guard khaki or something like that, one of those browns. And that's using that, uh, it's not Astro Granite uh, special effect to get those rocks. You could even just do a simple 50-50 split of water and Elmer school glue to get that and you just mix it with sand. Or you could do what I do with some of my other models. This is a 
Castle and Robot for my AdMac, and if we look at the base, this is Eschen Gray around the ring, and then that's just that Astro Granite Turf special effect debris that they make, that Citadel makes, and then I just dry brush the good old Longbeard Gray like I use for a lot of my stuff. If you wanted more of a 40k-esque moon or parking lot look. But yes, I'd say this model's 10 out of 10. One of my favorite models I've ever painted. Um, yeah, I'd say it's my second favorite model that I've ever painted. Uh, right behind the Eidolon of Mathlon from... No, I have a Deepkin range, which is still my all-time favorite model with his tsunami cloak. But yeah, you will for sure see Rodigus on the battlefield soon on beer and bat reps. Maybe he'll take on some ultramarines soon or some gray knights. That'll be good. Well, I hope you liked it, guys. You could easily tweak each step with to either fit the paints that you actually own, if you don't own all the paints I used, or if you want them to be a little bit different, if you don't want them to be as bright as I make my Nurgle leaders. But yeah, as you can see, I think he fits in well with his buddy. <laughs> Well, I hope this has been helpful, guys. It's definitely helped me. And it's actually a pretty simple paint scheme that really stands out on the battlefield. So this is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and thank you for joining us. And I'll be doing another one of these here pretty soon, showing how I do my Admech Dune Crawler. So hope to see you then. Thank you.